Hi, my name is Lucilla Ronai and welcome to the Conservation Starter. So today I want to take you for a tour of my conservation traveling toolkit. So if you're a conservator, maybe this might give you some ideas of tools you might want to get yourself. And if you're not a conservator, this will give you some insight to the pretty weird and wonderful tools that a conservator uses in their day-to-day -day work. We borrow equipment and tools from pretty much every industry. We work in conservation laboratories that are modeled off scientific laboratories, so filled with scientific equipment and tools like beakers and solvents but we also borrow from other industries like dentistry from doctors also book binding it's going to be some pretty interesting insight to the ways of a conservator i do have to say that this is not all the tools that i own i have a bit of a tool problem i keep buying them but it's for work so it's completely fine and this is just what i travel with so these are like the essential tools that i feel like i need on my person at all times when i'm traveling between spaces like conservation laboratories and book binderies i also have to say this is not all the equipment and tools that a conservator uses so let's jump right in for a tour of my traveling conservation toolkit so here is my traveling conservation toolkit all laid out. I find it pretty impressive that I've managed to fit this many tools in such a small and compact traveling case. This is my X-Acto triangle. It's in inches, unfortunately, and I'm in Australia, so I use the metric system, but it is very precise and it is great to cut along. I also have a plastic one, but it is in centimeters, which is quite useful. Then I have a whole range of sharp tools. So I have my trusty boot knife, which I use to cut through paper when I'm creating books and doing book binding. Then I have blades, which are a bit heavy duty, so I use them usually for boards or mount cutting. I also have a heavy duty Stanley knife and retractable blade for safety, which is great when traveling. Then I have my hacksaw blade. So it's got a very nice end that I love using for backing removals. I've wrapped this self adhering silicon tape to the handle and I've actually done this to quite a number of my blades. And it's because it's really ergonomic. So you can see it on both my scalpel handles. So I have both a size three and a size four for scalpel handle. Self-adhering silicon tape is this. You can get it in a few different colors. There's no adhesive involved and it's super stretchy and really nice and comfy to put on your handles if they're metal. And I've had it on my tools for about two and a half years and I haven't seen any degradation or change. So very useful. I got it from the hardware store in Australia. So I'm sure you could find it in most hardware stores. And I also have a few scalpel blades that I swap out as necessary. It's in my favorite shapes and sizes. I also have this Japanese Japanese blade. I actually don't know what this is called, but it's a very new acquisition in my toolbox. I think I could use it quite well in a backing removal. So I'm looking forward to having a backing removal where I can give this a go. So I think that's all my sharp tools. So other things that I have are, this is my storage for my needles. And I also have kept some needles in the packets they came in. And that just lets me know the sizes. When I was doing my internship at Trinity College Dublin, they actually made this wax from Dublin Bees. And this is the recipe on the outside and it's for using when I am sewing with a linen thread. You run the linen thread through it and it just smooths it out and makes it a lot easier to use. They put it in this old film canister and so that shaped the wax while it was still hot. I don't actually use this a lot. I probably don't need it in my traveling toolkit but it's just something that's so nostalgic that I just love having it with me. My tweezers and again this is only a small example of all the tweezers that I own so I've got a nice pointed pair and a curved pair and fully stainless steel we always love a good tweezer love the fine points very good for precision these are the two pairs of scissors that I carry with me this thicker pair I use for more multi-use whereas this fine pointed pair here I only use for Japanese tissue paper fibers trimming my repairs so this is my beautiful set square that I got in Dublin but it's quite solid but it is a good travel size and this is my all for book binding this is my phone loop which I clip onto my phone to get some magnification when I'm looking at objects closely in terms of magnifying tools I also have my linen tester this is a little brush holder and this was actually made for me by a fellow intern when I was doing my internship at the Library of Trinity College Dublin Ireland something for measuring is of course a trusty measuring tape a trusty metal ruler. I only have a small one with me, but I have been known to use ones up to 1.2 meters to do my box making and mount making. I usually always try and have a lead with me when I tr travel. If a pen falls and it 
creates a mark on an object, it's a pretty big deal, but if it's a pencil, you can just easily remove it. I also carry with me this little novelty ring. I have to be honest, I've never really used it. And onto my brushes, I carry quite a few with me. Most of them I try and have quite fine points and usually have them made from Taclon, so it's a good quality brush. But I've also included a fan brush, so I find this really useful when I'm doing repairs for books and going between layers of leather and boards. These are my dirty brushes, my use them roughly and throw away. I would never use them for repairs on objects or using on Japanese tissue, but for dirty work they're pretty darn good. I also, on top of that, keep my really lovely dry cleaning brush. It's a Japanese Hake cleaning brush made out of hog's hair. For less lovely work I have this other Japanese Hake brush, which is probably a bit more similar to what people are used to seeing from art and craft stores. Then I have my trusty Mars Stadler Ooh. <laughs> Then I have my trusty Mars Stadler eraser and also my crepe eraser. Then in terms of my metal tools, I have so many spatulas. Most of them are the beautiful Caselli leaf spatulas, which are just so thin and beautiful and flexible. I really love these as well because you can heat them up with a heat spatula or a hot plate, and then you can use them to slice through some adhesives like butter. So I have these in all different shapes and sizes. I also have a Teflon coated spatula here and then this is a more heavy duty less thin and less flexible spatula I got from a uh, mold making shop wax sort of sculptural shop this is a Hollenbach carver which is typically used by a dentist and finally for my stainless steel tools this is probably one of my favorite it is called a septum elevator and it is typically used for no surgery so a pretty good example of how conservators use really weird and wacky tools from other industries I can guarantee you this has never seen inside of a nose. I bought it new and I absolutely love it because each end there's a really thin end. I don't know if you can see it's quite sharp and pointy and really great for backing removals, lifting tape, lifting adhesive and then the other end is a bit thicker so it's for when you want less sharp but still good precision work and I've wrapped my self-sealing silicon tape around the center just to give me something more to hold on to and it's actually a really good way to delineate what your tools are from the general lab stash and this is my water brush you put the deionized water in here and you can screw off the lid to refill it. Conservators love using it for Japanese tissue repairs. This is my beautiful Japanese hole punch so you can get different heads of different sizes. I think I always carry around a 2 and a 2.5 millimeter hole punch with me. It's just a beautiful way to precisely create holes in materials. I have done it through leather which is probably not advisable because it does blunt the heads but these are the heads you can replace but the tool itself you can keep for years. I think I have 10 different head sizes to create different sized holes. And now we get to my ridiculous collection of bone folders. Again this is where I say this is not all the bone folders I own. It's actually made from animal bone if you didn't know and it's used Bone folders are used by conservators, book binders, goodness knows who else. We use these to lift objects, to turn pages, to create beautiful folds in things. We also use them to smooth repairs down. So the bone folder is probably the tool of the paper and book conservator that's the most commonly known about. One thing I do want to say is if anyone tries to sell you a bone folder and it is in fact instead plastic, that is not correct. It's called a bone folder for a reason. It's made from bone. These are a general selection of the ones I use most commonly. I have customized all my folders. I've uh, redone the edges and the finishes. I've shaped them and shaved them down. And I also want to do another video on how I care and shape my bone folders. So stay tuned for that. I think it's a bit much to talk about right now. And then lastly, I have my trusty Teflon folders. So Teflon is a really great material that is pretty much non-stick. So nothing will stick to these folders. They're great for separating layers. I have two that I purchased, one large and one small. And then I also have this one which was shaped to a really thin point at one end. This was actually shaped by Dominic Riley, who's a really renowned bookbinder and he sold them after he customized them. It's a beautiful end, flexible, thin, nothing sticks to it. Thank you for joining me for a tour of my conservation traveling toolkit. Hopefully it gave you some insight into the work of a conservator or maybe some inspiration for your own toolkit. If you have any questions about the tools you saw, how to use them, how I've adapted them or maybe where to get them, please let me know in the comments below. 